Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in today to watch my little video. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you today about joint fluid, um, specifically because I just had this case come across my desk that I thought would be worth showing and talking to you guys about. So this is a 10 year old lab that um, he has left hind limb lameness and swelling. He also is febrile and the vet reported that he had some um, fluid in his left stifle and also his joint capsule felt thickened and had some increased echogenicity on ultrasound. So they were concerned for possible infection versus neoplasia. They don't have any history of trauma around this area so there's no known source of infection for this joint. So they were a little perplexed as to what was going on so they aspirated the stifle joint fluid and this is what we have. So I'm on 10x right now and you can see um, even from this far back, let me get it into focus for you, even from this far back we can definitely tell that there's inflammation and, and this 10x objective is nice because it gives us a nice overall feel of cellularity and joint fluid normally should be very low cellularity so mostly just a protonaceous background so that kind of blue hue, um, blue to purple hue and then low numbers, very pretty pretty significantly low numbers of like some macrophage type cells. Um, in this case, right away we can see that there are way too many nucleated cells in this joint fluid for it to be normal. So all these cells all over here are nucleated cells. So I'm going to just scan a little bit so you can get a good feel of how crazy inflamed this is. And then I'm going to pop down a little bit closer I'm going on to my 60x x objective here. Turn up my light. And we can see that these are mostly neutrophils, right? So these cells have little segmented nuclei, clear to basophilic cytoplasm. So mostly neutrophils, we've got like a small lymphocyte popping in there. But one thing that I'm noticing right away is that the nuclei of these neutrophils are a little bit puffy. They're not that terrible but they're kind of losing that sharp, crisp uh, nuclear segmentation. So this guy over here looks more, you know, what I expect for like a non-degenerate neutrophil to look like. Those nuclear lobes are quite crisp. But all of these guys here, they're just starting to get a little bit injected looking, like their nuclei have been injected with a little bit of water or foam. So these are starting to look a little degenerate, and I don't like that at all. Um, when I see degenerate neutrophils, no matter what kind of uh, sample we're looking at, I worry about infection. And so the first thing that I'm going to do in this joint is I'm going to look for bacteria because we have marked inflammation and we also have um, the, this degenerate look to these neutrophils. One thing you'll notice, and if you get nauseated when you look at people scanning, you should look away <laughs> at this point because one thing you'll notice is that it's going to it sometimes takes a while uh, to find bacteria in a joint um, if if it's there. Sometimes it can still be infected and you don't you won't find the bacteria. So even if I didn't find bacteria in this joint, if there's any concern for sepsis in a joint, um, you know, and there being this marked inflammation, that would be one reason to be a little bit concerned about potential infection. Then I'm going to do culture. But ah, look what we have there right inside that neutrophil, let me get it in focus, our little cocci. So this is a perfect example of intracellular cocci bacteria. You can see that they're not, they're, they're actually like blue and very uniform structures. It looks like they're little diplococci actually. There's one next to each other, or two little packets of them. Um, all You can compare that to all the little dip, dip dots in the background. That's all just debris, but these are definitely bacteria and we definitely want to culture this to see what type of bacteria that is to guide our treatment. But because I found this bacteria, I can definitely call this a septic joint. Um, and you, you really want to find that bacteria to call it septic. But again, if you don't find the bacteria, that doesn't rule out infection. And actually it can be quite tough to find bacteria inside of infected joints. Um, in a lot of cases you don't find it. So we got a little lucky here, but definitely a septic joint in this case. Culture and sensitivity would be next step. Um, and then go from there and hopefully he gets better.